Welcome to Digging Deeper, a podcast of Perimeter Church in Atlanta, Georgia, hosted by me, Jeff Norris, along with my co-host, Laura Story Elvington. This podcast aims to equip you to follow Jesus by digging deeper into the teachings and topics of the Bible and of culture and really just life in general. And we're excited about this next series of episodes that we're calling Kingdom People. And all of us, I think, feel this push and pull of the culture around us. And in the midst of these cultural pressures, how do we live in a way that really represents the kingdom of God in what feels like a very different kingdom? So over these next episodes, we're going to be joined by a diverse group of special guests who help us explore not only what it means to live counterculturally, but equip us also with tools and perspectives to live as a people after God's own heart. So I'm so glad you joined us as we dig into the treasures of God's Word and apply them to our lives today as we follow Jesus together. Now, let's jump into today's discussion. Well, welcome to Digging Deeper. We're so glad that you're joining us for this episode, and we're really glad to have Shanti Feldhahn with us, who uh, is no stranger to me and Laura, and hopefully not to you, because we've had her here on the podcast before in the past. A couple times. A uh, couple times, and now back again to talk some more about, uh, well, a few different things, and we'll get into that. But uh, we'll start, Shanti, with remind listeners and watchers who you are and what you do and you're a, you're also a Perimeter member, so maybe yes. tell us how long you've been at Perimeter. I've been at Perimeter, gosh, I'd have to add this up, since my kids were like 10 and my daughter was 10. So, so only just a few years like then, right? Almost 15 years 15, now. 15, yeah, there you go. 14 yeah. years. Yeah. Great. Which is awesome. So. All right. Now, what do you do? What's your, what's your day job? So the easiest way of describing it is to say I'm a social researcher um, and an author and a speaker. And basically what I feel called to do is to use, I have sort of an analytical background. I used to work on Wall Street. And to use that background to dig out the things that uh, are kind of the little things that make a big difference to help people thrive yeah, mm, in their cool. lives, in their relationships, in their relationship with the Lord. Yeah. So Social researcher. Yeah. I thought yes. that was so neat because I've always yeah. thought of you as a speaker and a writer. <laughs> but I, I think even your, your books, uh, it's so obvious that social research really does drive what what you do. Yes, pretty much everything. It's it's essentially me saying, look, I am here trying to help you with your life and your relationships. I am not a therapist. I'm not a counselor. I'm not a pastor, right? That's like the normal person who talks mm-hmm. about this. Um, and so I will let all of those amazing professionals kind of cover the waterfront. Yes. Um, what I can do, though, is to be able to say, OK, like if you're just going to make this little change, what's going to be the like big impact? Like if you're going to do one thing, what's going to have the biggest impact? And in order to say that, I need to do surveys and I need mm. to do studies and I need to like dig into that to be able to say it. So it's not my opinion. Mm. That is so neat. And and people I mean, you've written a lot of books, but yeah. the book for women only is probably the one that you are the most uh, well known for. Uh, how does how did your social researching or just that that uh, passion of yours hmm. feed into you writing that book? Well, it sort of started it actually um, because literally the way that that book started, I had moved down here to Atlanta from New York, right? Just and a little I, bit of a. A transition slight culture shift, <laughs> just a slight one. Um, myself and my husband, Jeff, and I actually, it's sort of a long story, but the short version is that I had a chance to write a couple of novels. This whole thing started with that because <laughs> I, I had a main character in one of my novels who was a man and I didn't know how to put thoughts in his head. Hmm. Uh. I had no idea what this guy would be thinking. Of course, I have to say what my main character is thinking, yeah. you know? Yeah. And so I started asking men you know, like my husband or thinking? other friends, yeah. <laughs> what would you be thinking? Like, were you, in, in were you this scared scene? when they were, oh, yeah, like, my word. Yeah, like, really? That's all life. you're thinking? I, really? I often no. ask them, what are you thinking? Yes, I, I no. say that all the time to my husband. It, it is, it was the most interesting thing is yeah. as the men started saying, oh, if this was me in the scene, like, this is what, I, I was so surprised. Mm. And then I started to realize, wait a minute. Like I'm hearing really foundational stuff, That's like so good. really deep things that I'd been married maybe eight years at that point. Like, why didn't I know this? So mm. that's what started the whole thing, because I had to do a survey of men to figure out if this was like true. Or not. Yeah. Yeah. So that's how For Women Only came to be. 
Okay, so I know that we're not here to talk about that, but can you tell us like one example sure. of, of what you sure. you learned that people needed to know? I'm <laughs> I'm going to sit here with our senior pastor <laughs> <laughs> and say that even the most accomplished, confident looking man on the inside, I think the numbers were... I think it was 87%. I'd have to go back and look at the numbers. Have this deep self-doubt yeah. inside. Yeah. This yeah. like deep, like I, I really want to be a great husband, great mm. pastor, great father, whatever it is. But I'm really not sure I know what I'm doing. Like yeah. somebody's going to find out. And we as women, once we actually realize, whoa, like that's just a mask and mm. there's so this good. tenderness on the inside, like it changes everything about how you approach a relationship. Mm. That's so interesting. And it, there's a part of me that would want to even say, okay, 87% admitted it, 13% lied. <laughs> so it's <laughs> some other men. Yeah, because yeah. it's like, I mean, either you're you're self-delusional at some level and, or, you know, I don't yeah. know, but I, I just think, yeah. That's so true of me and every man that I know who will be honest about it. Yeah. And it doesn't mean you can't be good at what you do or what God's called you to do. But deep down that, yeah, that doubt, that self-doubt is there for yeah. sure. And, and that's an example when we talk about the little things that really matter to help us thrive. That's an example of just a little aha moment that goes, oh, my word, like mm. that changes everything. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Well, OK, the reason that's I mean. I, there's a part of me that's like, man, let's just do the whole podcast on, <laughs> on that. But the reason we have you here today yeah. is to have a conversation around a book that you first wrote. The first edition of the book was how many years ago? Six years ago? It was 2016, 2017. Oh, it's been that long. 2017. Been that long. Okay. Yeah. All right. Gosh, that's already been what? Seven Six, years? Seven years, man. which is crazy. That is crazy. That's when you had just come to Premier. Yeah. Well, too. I've been here maybe a year and a half or two yeah, years at that point, yeah. and we helped kind of. And you were the main yeah. leader to help the church do the 30 day kindness challenge. Yeah. And, we were, yeah. I was at that point, maybe the, yeah, that was when I was young families pastor, I think. And mm -hmm. you came to me and said, hey, would you help with this research? And so, anyway. Yeah. Fun story to that, but it, what ended up coming out of that was the book that you wrote called The Kindness Challenge. Yeah. Now you have another edition that is out or coming out. Well, it's not a new edition of a book. It's a new edition of the 30-Day Kindness of Challenge. Of the actual challenge. Yes. Okay. So, which, let me go back first and just say uh, or ask, what is the Kindness Challenge? Sure. And then I want to get to what this newest edition of the challenge is. So the 30-Day Kindness Challenge is essentially... We realized looking back at all of our studies mm -hmm. that there's this thread that was running through them mm -hmm. of whether you thrive, like we're talking about what makes helps you thrive, whether you thrive in your life, whether you thrive in your relationships. It turns out it is far more related, far more correlated to how we treat other people hmm. than mm -hmm. how they treat us, which is like completely backwards right, of the way you, we I'm going to have think. you say that again because yeah, that's yeah. so important. I don't want people to miss that. Say that again. So it turns out whether we're thriving in yep. a relationship, for example, is far more related to how we treat other people than how we ourselves are being treated. Hmm. And so naturally, weird. in our sinful human nature, naturally, we think it's the other way around. It's like, I'll feel happier. I'll feel better. I'll have better relationships mm -hmm. if... People treat me fairly. Yeah. And of course, there's nothing wrong with wanting to be treated yeah. fairly. That's yeah. fine. It's just that it turns out in this upside down economy that God has given us in his kingdom, it turns out that actually, no, whether we're truly thriving is far more related to how we are mm. being with others. And so we realized it's all about being kind. Mm. Really, that's kind of the bottom line. And so <laughs> the problem was we realized all of us already think we are kind. <laughs> we, <laughs> and we don't realize we're kind of deluded. Yeah. Like we don't realize that we are not the people of kindness every day that we think we are. Mm. And so we created and tested this tool called the 30 Day Kindness Challenge that is basically a boot camp. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. To help you actually become the person you think you already are. And yeah. it's it really opens your eyes to all the ways you are unkind every day yeah. and didn't realize it. Yeah. Yeah. It, Laura's holding the book there. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see it. <laughs> if you're just listening, um, the name of the book is The Kindness Challenge. And so you can order it anywhere. Uh, yeah. The subtitle is 30, 30 Days to Improve Any Relationship. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
And that's the normal version mm-hmm. that we've been doing now for seven years. Right. Yes. Yes. That and you guys helped us research. That's right. Yes. And so 30 days, the challenge, 30 days, you can, all in all of your relationship, in, in relationships, you're only going to pursue kindness. You're not going to speak ill of anyone. You're not going to, yeah. What, tell us about some of the, some of the, you know, specifics of the sure. challenge. Sure. The, yeah. the normal, the original edition of the yep. 30 day kindness challenge that we tested empirically, like this is all based on what actually happens statistically is you do the same three things every day for 30 days. So you pick a person to mm-hmm. do this for. So for example, you, the colleague that drives you nuts, Mm -hmm. right? Or the mother-in-law or Mm -hmm. your child or your spouse, whatever. Anyone you want a better relationship with. And you do these three things every day for 30 days. You first, you don't say anything negative about them, either to them or about them Mm -hmm. to somebody else. Mm -hmm. Because that is often where we sabotage our relationships and don't realize it, okay? Second, every day for 30 days, you find one thing that you can like, sincerely praise about this person so you can't like talk about your husband behind his back to your girlfriends because you're annoyed but you're looking for things to praise and so you're like thank you so much for taking the kids when I was on zoom and I couldn't hear myself think in that meeting so appreciate it you're awesome and then you go behind the scenes to your girlfriends and say you know what he did yesterday Mm. Okay, so Mm -hmm. you're looking for things to praise. You're telling that person and another person. And then third, every day for 30 days, you just do a small action of kindness, Mm -hmm. just a small action of generosity. And that could be little like I did this for my daughter when she was 16 because great kid. But, you know, 16. (laughs) Right. Mm -hmm. And um, and like my head wanted to explode Mm -hmm. sometimes. And so an action of generosity for her would be if she was came running in. Hey, mom, watch this little TikTok video with me. And I'm on a deadline. I'm like in an hour, honey, you know, like come Mm. back in an hour. An act of generosity is like putting my attention on her when she's excited about it. Not an hour later. Right. And it's just a little thing. But these three little bitty things every day. It opens your eyes to, whoa, I had no idea that every day yeah. I was mm-hmm. being unkind. And I had no idea I wasn't being as affirming every day as I thought I was. And mm-hmm. so we found 89% of relationships improved when people wow. did those three things every day. Wow. wow. I, I'll make a comment here. And then, I, Laura, I know you've got a question about the next edition that, we're, yeah. that we really want to discuss. Uh, but what I, one of the things I love about this, the Kindness Challenge in general, is that it's not just like this, like, oh, this is a good idea. We should be kind. It's actually a fruit of the Spirit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's it's part of what someone who is filled with the Spirit and tethered to Christ, this is what comes out of us. Like, you know, love, yeah. joy, peace, patience, kindness. Yeah. So, it should come out of us. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. <laughs> and, and mm-hmm. you know, but the, for the Christian, there's that sense of, on one level, conviction, but also... I think another level of encouragement of saying, yeah. this isn't just, hey, let's grit our teeth here and do something that's not natural to the Christian life. This is actually a very huge part of the Christian life. It's supposed to be. Yeah. It, it's interesting because I do, I, I share this with a lot of churches. We have we have had probably more than 400,000 people go through the 30 Day Kindness Challenge. Mm-hmm. And it's usually because a church says, let's bring Shanti in and we'll talk about this and We'll do it as a church, you know, the first community church, 30 day kind of challenge or whatever. And it's but it's interesting because one of the things that I always say is, you know, when we started talking about kindness, I, I know everybody in this room. I don't know you personally, but I know everybody we value this. Like yeah. we want that. We think this already is a characteristic of us. And so we're thinking, oh, man, I wish Jennifer were here. Mm. <laughs> you yeah. know, like, mm-hmm. oh, yeah. John really needs to hear this. Yeah. Like, I wish darn, they I wish this. they were here. Yep. As a, And then you start doing it and you're like, oh, my word. Hmm. Like, I had no idea hmm. that I was so unkind. Yeah. And I'll give you an example, just a very transparent, yeah. slightly embarrassing <laughs> example. <laughs> but we identified that there were seven patterns of negativity and unkindness. Okay. Sort mm-hmm. of things that you could break it down into those buckets. I didn't think, like everybody else, I didn't think this was me. And then I had to start doing this every day and not saying anything negative or unkind. And I realized 
I do this every day Mm -hmm. because one of the seven patterns is exasperation. Mm -hmm. And I get exasperated with my kids, for example, all the time. I have no idea that when I'm like telling my son, you know, I can't believe we worked on that project for two hours and then he forgot to turn it in and my Mm -hmm. voice is rising. And Mm -hmm. I don't realize that what I'm saying to him is you're an idiot. Mm -hmm. I would never use those words with my sweet sensitive son right but that's what i'm saying and so it's like it wakes us up to that need which let me tell you in today's culture especially in the season that we're in we need to be woken up to that need yeah that's good and I, 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 I'm pretty sure I've said those exact words to my <laughs> child within the past, uh, you know, two weeks. So that's that's very convicting. Uh, wow, yeah, so so much to unpack there. But more specifically, uh, so we, we are recording this for those who are listening and watching. We're recording this this series uh, during the the season leading up to the 2024 election. But yeah. hopefully, people will be listening to it, you know, after that after, as well. Ab- absolutely. And really, when it comes to um, you know civic engagement, there, these principles are always helpful. Mm-hmm. Yes. Whether it's pre-election, post-election, or just any any time. Um, you have some things to say about just how to um, how to be kind to people that think differently yeah. than you. What would you say as far as in engaging? I know, I know it sounds very simple, but mm. so often that's where we see. The- <coughs> no, that totally is where we see the strife right now and the negativity. Honestly, if you look at what all the social scientists out there, the sociologists, they've tried to get a handle on where all this is coming from, right? Mm. And without intending to, one of the most sort of crucial factors is that we don't recognize that we are actually disliking and hating our neighbor. Mm -hmm. We don't realize Mm. that we're not loving our neighbor. We are actually believing the worst of them. We're making them into a bit of a caricature Um, And we're building them into somebody, if we disagree with them, into somebody who's not just like, well, I disagree with them. It's like, oh, man, they, this is dangerous. Like they're deluded or this is, it's basically making an aspersion on their character because, Mm -hmm. of course, how could you believe such a thing? And they do the same thing to us. Mm -hmm. And so that was one of the things we wanted to tackle with this election edition of the 30 day kindness challenge to wake us up to that. Cause I don't think any of us would mm. ever want to feel that way or yeah. consciously feel that way. Yeah. What, let me ask you this. What, what does it look like practically? How do, well, I'll say it this way. How can we be kind to someone that we truly have nothing in common with on, on, you know, spiritually or even uh, morally or socially or politically, like, you know, we, we know we're called to love our neighbor yeah, and, and we know that we are to be kind to them as we love them. But then, you know, we, we, we really struggle to find any common ground. What does kindness look like in that, in in that case, in your opinion? Pretend you know nothing about their politics. Hmm. This is just somebody that is another human that you met that is the soccer mom next to you while you're waiting to pick up your kids, Hmm. right? Like, you don't know what their politics are. You would have a perfectly normal conversation with them. Mm -hmm. You would enjoy your time together. You know, you would probably see each other. You'd, you know, share ideas. You'd start, like, having conversations. And then somewhere along the way, if that comes up, it's like, oh, Mm -hmm. why? Why should that be, oh, Right. Just Mm -hmm. because there is a pretty substantial disagreement, Mm -hmm. it doesn't mean they are fundamentally not a child of God Mm -hmm. that we are called to love. Yeah. I and it and by the way, one of the things that we found in the research that was so convicting for me, um, because another type of negativity is catastrophizing. Mm. And that is something that is rampant today. And that's Very, something I feel yeah. in myself. Yeah. Now, I will confess, I didn't know that there was a word catastrophizing. I didn't know what that meant. <laughs> but it is basically this. And you may recognize this in yourself. It's like, oh, my gosh, if such and such happens, 
it's going to be a catastrophe. Yeah. If yeah. my daughter dates that boy, it's going to be a catastrophe. Mm-hmm. If this person gets elected, it's going to be a catastrophe. And you know what? Maybe it is. If your daughter dates that boy, it might be a catastrophe. Like it yeah. may be true. Yeah. But we give ourselves permission to be remarkably unkind mm-hmm. because we're confronting this catastrophe. And you know what? There's no carve out yeah. in the scripture <laughs> for yeah. that. Jesus doesn't say, oh, in, in case of catastrophe, you can be jerks. Like, yeah. actually, I think it was that's the other way around. Point. Yeah. 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 That's so good in the sense of, and, and uh, you know, we talk about this a lot at Perimeter. I've, I've shared this a number of times from the front, but it to come back to the reality, okay, who, if Jesus was unkind to anyone, and at times you could argue he was that, angry. It, that it was, he was unkind in the sense of that he was uh, calling out things. It was all, it was with the religious who um, weren't treating the non-religious yes. with kindness and respect and with invitation and with the love of God. Yes. And so, or they had made things about the worship of God into self, self, uh, you know, things that would glorify self rather than glorify God. And so I think about that today and I go, okay. Because I hear a lot, and I understand the question. Well, Jesus turned over tables, mm-hmm. right? He he stood for truth, absolutely, right? But I, you didn't see him going into the brothels to turn over tables. You saw him going into the temple. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Why? Well, because the religious of the day didn't look like God. Yeah. Yeah. Right. They they didn't look. They didn't have the heart of God. They didn't have uh, the disposition of God. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I just think, man, that's worth thinking about as we think about, okay, uh, well, let me say it this way, particularly men in the church who begin to catastrophize, they begin to say, well, if you're kind, you're a pushover. Mm. What I would argue is this, no, 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 being kind doesn't make you a pushover. Being kind makes you more like Jesus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So do you want to be like Jesus? Um, who at the right time and in the proper context did exercise righteous anger, but it was almost always not in the context that you and I want to operate in righteous anger. I know. So, you know, there's just a lot to wrestle with there. Um, and if you find yourself really pushing hard against what you're saying, Shanti, mm-hmm. and going, well, I don't want to be kind in this scenario, and I don't want to be kind in this scenario, and I don't want to be kind in this scenario, then I might say, and you're going to be mad at me for saying this, not you, but people listening, I might say, well, maybe you don't want to be like Jesus. Yeah. You know? So, uh, and maybe several people just turned us off. I don't know. but <laughs> that's, that's really good. Well, I'll tell you the passage I kept on thinking about when you were talking about, uh, you know, because really kindness is... Our actions, our behaviors are, are flowing out of what's happening in our heart in and our heart. mind. Yeah. Yeah. And I think so much about uh, Philippians 4, where Paul's saying, like, he gives us a grid of what to allow in our minds. Yeah. Is it true? Mm. Is it honorable? When we're having these thoughts about that person that we're seeing as an opponent, as an enemy, because of their political view, yeah. um, oftentimes um, the Lord is saying, the reason you're so worked up is because you've allowed these thoughts or that idea of that person to, to fester for so long. Um, yeah, you just kind of see how much it is our responsibility mm. to um, to really take control of the things that we're thinking. Mm. Well, we also, and this is also, <laughs> I apologize if people, more people turn off the podcast <laughs> at this point, you know, um, but we also have to confront something that's a subconscious feeling, certainly in these kinds of scenarios where you're talking about an election, you're talking about big things that people really care about in our culture. Yeah. And understandably so, looking for the righteousness of Christ mm-hmm. to come forward. But you cannot heal by causing harm, mm. right? And, and you so cannot good. cause the righteousness of Christ to come forward in our culture by being unrighteous mm. and by displaying the opposite of the fruits of the Spirit. You just can't. Yeah. And so I would urge, because I have those same feelings, like, oh, my word. Oh, yeah. like Me too. There are things mm-hmm. that I care about that are I am so passionate and worried about and and i go oh but if i'm if i'm gentle such and such might win mm-hmm. instead of this winning you know yeah. such and such might win and we have to go 
Yeah, and Jesus said that was okay. Yeah. He came not as a king, yeah. right? He yeah. came for as salvation a yep. as a servant, yep. knowing that it would mean persecution, mm-hmm. knowing that it would mean a lack of power, not taking power yeah. in order to sort of drive the yeah. kingdom forward through power. Yeah. It often looks very much the opposite. And what we found statistically um the impact of this fruit of the spirit, mm. kindness, it is astounding how much it has supernatural, mm. miraculous power to change hearts. Because mm. you're like, you're talking to your Uncle Joe who believes everything opposite you. And, yeah. you know, and he's being all crotchety and angry and he's not being very nice. And when you are kind, he's got all those walls up, you know. When you're kind to him regardless, it's amazing to watch how kindness, it doesn't break down the walls, it melts through them. Mm. Oh, that's And it touches their heart Mm -hmm. whether they want to be touched or not. Mm. And that's the power. Which is an issue. It's an issue of disposition. Like, what is our disposition towards those that we don't really have much in common with or we really strongly disagree with? And what I mean by disposition is, and I've said this numerous times, and I'll just be a broken record on this front. The, the the people that are not, they're not in the church, they see differently than you or, or I do or somebody does politically, whatever, and they just, they're neighbors of yours, neighbors in the sense of maybe they literally are neighbors, but maybe they're just people that you come across at work or whatever. Um, and there's this, there's this tendency uh, to let them know how deeply opposed you are to what they think and what they believe and how detrimental that's going to be to the country. And it's okay to believe that in the sense of what we're saying here doesn't mean you Mm -hmm. don't care about the future of the country. Yeah. Care about it and care about these issues and care. But when you're in, when you're engaging with people, uh, what, what wins them to Jesus is not your opposition. It's your disposition. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's so good. It's not, you need to know how wrong you are. Yeah. And you need to know how, if you do this, then that's going to happen. This going to happen. That's not winning anybody. Because So often if you do it in such a combative way, you actually push them even further (laughs) into what they, they (laughs) They already believe believe in the first place. (laughs) Totally. So it's not for me to get into a little sermonette here, but it's, it's, it's actually to your point about melting the heart. Yeah. It's like there we stand such a better chance of actually moving them towards Jesus through kindness. Yeah. Then, you know, the disposition of kindness rather than the opposition of the, of uh, you're wrong here and here and here. And what mm-hmm. matters more and people are going to hate this, but let's just sort of open this up to conversation. What matters more? Is it their hearing about an openness to Jesus because you're showing the love and the kindness mm-hmm. and the care and the mercy and the graciousness of mm-hmm. Jesus, the gentleness, right? Yeah. Or is it trying to convince them? Is it showing them how wrong they are? Yeah. Is it trying to get a particular policy passed? And everybody just went, oof, because yeah. I kind of think the policy getting passed, if that's going to help millions of people and not, you know, versus mm-hmm. the heart of one person, mm-hmm. maybe you've got to do that. And again, I don't think Jesus gave us an out. And believe me, I know how hard this is. You probably didn't know this. I used to work on Capitol Hill. Mm. That was my first job mm-hmm. was actually working in the middle of politics. I, I grew up in Washington, D.C. That was my first job for three years, mm. working in the middle of it yep. on wow. the Hill and, you know, combating every day. And mm. boy, that's me naturally. Yeah. Yeah. But it's not the combativeness is not what we're called to. Yeah, yeah. Shandi, this has just been wonderful. Thank you. I mean, wonderful in a in a saying hard <laughs> in an uncomfortable things, way. In an uncomfortable <laughs> way. Yes, uh, and this is coming right on the heels of two podcasts where Jeff and a group of pastors um, did these round table table discussions. Uh, that are really wonderful conversations. But thank you for kind of kicking us off um, with kindness. And it is kind of interesting that we would even need to have a podcast that talk that talks about kingdom people show kindness. Mm. It, it's just kind of an obvious thing from the scripture. It should That's be an ob- obvious uh, yeah. characteristic of a, of a Christ follower. Um, last thing, what word would you have for someone who is just saying, I just 
am not sure whether I can do this. I just hmm. don't know whether I can be kind like like you're describing. I get that. I mean, my personality, I have a pretty strong personality, and, you know, I get this. To the, to believe the person me. who's using their Enneagram number to justify how, oh, that's just yeah. not me. Yeah. I, I totally get it. Um, and, and I do, under, I truly do understand it. I feel it myself every day. But the reality is you can because Jesus has called us to right. it. He wouldn't call you to something that's impossible. We have to subordinate maybe our temperament, our personality, and the way we think that's supposed to come out to his call. Um, easy to say, hard to do sometimes. Yeah. And so I really would encourage for people to either do a tool like the 30 day kindness challenge or the election edition, which I'd love to mention, yes. even though we're sort of in this, we won't always for people who are listening to this podcast later, um, both before and after the election, we're going to have a season mm -hmm. where this is important. And, and so with the way we did this, you can go to kindness, 2024.com and see how we modified the 30 day kindness challenge. And we're gonna encourage everybody mm. to do this. The difference is instead of picking one person, like your daughter or your mm -hmm. spouse, or your colleague, what we say is treat everyone who disagrees with you, who you disagree with mm. as that other person. Mm. So say nothing negative mm. about them either to them or about them to somebody else. And now everybody just went like, that's impossible. <laughs> like, are you kidding? Like, how can I say nothing negative? I'm just going to go ahead and cancel my Facebook account. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Say nothing negative. And it's astounding. Once you realize that you can't do that, you go, I had no idea how often I was doing mm. that. Right? Yeah. Okay. So, so say, try it. Just try it for like three or four days. Just try it. And you'll see, wow, maybe I need to do this. So that's the first thing. Treat that person who disagrees with you. Say nothing negative. And then the second is to find and say the positive hmm. and affirm something about a person that day who you disagree with. So your Uncle Joe, you know, who is being crotchety or whatever mm -hmm. over dinner, you can actually tell him, you know, you know, Uncle Joe, I actually, you know, it's no surprise. I really disagree with you. But that one point you made like, that's a really good point. Like, I can tell how mm. much you care about yeah. this. And people who, you know, are advocating for that, they really care about such and such. And he may just keel over, like, because you've <laughs> just been kind. And then yeah. you go back behind the scenes to your spouse and you say, you know what? Uncle Joe made a good point. And you're not giving the permission to win. You're just being kind. And then the third thing every day is to do a small action of kindness or generosity for somebody that you disagree with politically. And that could be that you're standing with a soccer mom and you discover that, you know, this person you've been getting to be friends with now is something that's like completely disagree with. And you ask her questions. Hmm. Tell me more about that. Yeah. You know, help me understand. I'm, I'm curious. And you're just being generous by listening for a few minutes yeah. or you bring her a cup of coffee or you whatever, like yeah. those things will melt our hearts. Hmm. That's good. So the website is kindness2024.com. Kindness and Go there's, there. And there's 30 days of reminder emails. What do you do if you want to kill somebody instead? Like, you know, what do you do if you just want to look? So that's what we're hoping is that everybody will do this as a tool. Mm. Yeah. Final thought is, you know, in my, in my years, 20, gosh, how many years now? 20 I don't even know. I, I can't do the math that quick. 20 something years of ministry, uh, engaging many of those years with people who don't know the Lord. Um, I've yet to hear any non-Christian who thinks differently from the Christian worldview say, hey, could you please share with me what Christians are opposed to? What do you, what do you not like? What do you think is wrong? Because here's the thing, they know. Yes. Th they're aware. It's very clear to them. We don't have to keep doubling down on that. Uh, what they're not used to, sadly, what they're not used to is Christians pursuing them, approaching them, moving towards them with this otherworldly kindness and graciousness and care yeah. and question asking and yeah. like saying, hey, I really want to get to know you. That's to your point. That's what melts the heart yeah. and uh, pulls them towards Jesus in you. So we'll leave it at that. Shanti, thank you. 
and Absolutely. and go do the challenge. Go go to the website, uh, kindness2024.com, and uh, it could be really, really, it will be really, really beneficial if you do so. Uh, thanks for joining us for this episode of Digging Deeper. Shanti, again, thanks for giving us your time, and we'll see you in the next episode. 